Hello, my name is Alexander Kerry. Welcome to the program. The Council of Europe launched a project called Strengthening Freedom of the Media and Establishing a Public Broadcasting System in Ukraine. And this project is aimed to guarantee the right to freedom of media in Ukraine. Joining us in the studio to discuss the media landscapes and its struggles in Ukraine is Gunnar Garfors, advisor for the Norwegian Broadcasting Corporation. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, so first, uh, first question. The, um, in, this, in this project, 16 European countries uh, are taking part in this, in this project. And you went uh, on behalf of Norway, if I'm, if I'm not wrong. Uh, what does Ukraine for you has to benefit from Norwegian experience in that matter? Well, I'll be talking about radio and focusing mm -hmm. on radio and digital radio. In Norway, we are actually switching off FM analog radio as the first country in the world. And there is a lot of reasons for that. We are seeing that people want a better choice. Uh, we're giving them that via digital radio. Um, we're giving them better coverage. Everybody in Norway, which is a big country with a lot of fjords and mountains. So even people in small villages and in islands and, and, and remote places should be able to get the, exactly the same radio offering as people in the cities. Uh, so through digitalization, we're, we're accomplishing this, um, but of course it's costly to have two different network, one analog and one digital. The FM network was old, so we're now going over to, to digital radio. And I, I think um, we, we're very early in Norway, and I don't expect Ukraine to, to follow us anytime soon, but I think we have a lot of lessons that you might be able to, to learn from. And then, of course, you need to draw your own conclusions whether you want to do the same thing or, or not. Yeah, and as you say, <clears throat> it implies modernization. It implies a, a whole lot, of, a lot, a lot of tools. Does it pass by, passes by internet, this, this network, is it, or is it a different digital network? Uh, it's a digital broadcast network, mm -hmm. so it's, uh, it's one to everybody. You have the signals in the air, just like with FM. But with FM, you have one transmitter will only transmit one radio station. With DAB, which is the name of the technology, um, one transmitter can transmit 15 radio stations. So it's much cheaper technology. Um, we're also using the internet, of course, so, so we're not against internet in, in any form. Uh, but we see that internet coverage is not very good. If a lot of people are using internet at the same time, we're seeing problems especially while driving, you will have a lot of problems listening to, to the radio all the time. And for us, it's important to have a broadcasted network as a backbone in order to reach everybody. And I mean broadcasting, it, it's one to everybody. It does not discriminate. It's free of charge, so everybody will be able to get this. This is unfortunately not the case with, with the internet as, as mm. it is um, today. So uh, coming back to the project, it has been launched in 2016 and it will end in uh, 2018. So it's two years, uh, two years project. Uh, we're in 2017, so right in, a, in the middle of it. Um, did you see any progress if you were part of it in the beginning? Did you, did you see any progress in between when it was launched and, in, and today? Uh, well, I, I have not been involved no. in the project uh, previously. Mm -hmm. so I've been called in as an expert from, from Norway to, to tell our story. So, so I'm, I'm the wrong person to ask uh, it's with fine. regards to that. It's fine, I have a lot of other questions. <laughs> don't, don't worry. So uh, if, we, if we take into account so the, the, this tool, um, like what, because uh, Ukraine's media as institution still has inherited some post-Soviet and has to get out of, of uh, post-Soviet thing. Um, how does it benefit from Norwegian experience? I know it's far countries in that, in that matter, but how can it directly benefit from it? Well, people get a lot better, uh, a lot more choice. They get more radio stations. Uh, so now, instead of trying to um, to um, give something to everybody on the same radio station, you know, it's impossible to satisfy everybody, in, uh, you know, on one radio station. Or you can do that by having programs. So you will satisfy uh, 40 euro plus between 12 and one o'clock. Then you have to satisfy youngsters like kids mm. at between one and two, and so on and so forth. So you know, it's really hard to do that uh, when we go digital we have room for many many more radio stations so we can have one radio station for 40 plus we can have one radio station for for kids uh, we actually have introduced uh, one of the most popular radio stations um, it's the third biggest now in Norway it's called p1 plus and that's for 60 plus uh, because they were saying that no the music on on the number one radio station it's too it's too young you know we we want the old music the stuff we listened to 30 years ago please give us that we want 
want our own radio station. Now, going digital, we, we have been able to do this. And we are now giving them one radio station for, well, 60 plus. And it's phenomenally um, uh, popular. Uh, also, we have one for kids. It's called NRK Super. Uh, we have one sports uh, station. We have jazz music. We have, uh, well, we, we have the one that used to be the biggest. It's still the biggest, but mm -hmm. it's now smaller, which sounds like a contradiction, but it's actually a good thing because we can now help many other different groups, you know, get what they want whenever they want it through their own radio station. So my understanding is, is like uh, targeting the right consumer, but I, uh, the, the Ukrainian landscape today seems more uh, eager to be, well, on television. I mean, <laughs> not to defend us, but... Um, and do you think that radio, uh, the Ukrainian public, is, is more eager and more ready to, to go through uh, the radio medium, which is a lasting medium, of course, but do you think that Ukraine is ready to, um, to get its, its information all or by radio? I, I definitely think so. And we've seen digitization of, of every media. I mean, newspapers have gone more and more digital. We still have papers. I mean, paper papers. Uh, television has, has been digitized in, in, in many, many countries. So r radio is sort of the last media to, uh, to digitize. Um, and yes, I do believe also in Ukraine, radio has got a you know, high standing here. A lot of people listen a lot to, to radio. Um, so it is an important media. Uh, and I think it's important to give people the choice uh, and give them more choice, um, you know, better radio programs, better radio stations and more competition. Uh, mm. And that's something I, I, I think is, is definitely something you, you could benefit from here, getting more players, more private uh, players, more commercial radio stations and also a big uh, public service broadcaster as well. And that's what we see in Norway and many other countries in, in, in Western Europe is that uh, public service broadcasters like NRK in Norway, like the BBC in the UK, they are working very closely together with competitors and private competitors. And, and all together, you're giving a very, very good offering. You know, you have some public service uh, radio, you have some private radio, and, and in all, in, in all in all, this, this is giving um, a really good choice to, um, to uh, listeners, to consumers. Mm. So, you, it, <clears throat> so this idea of offering a wider range, as I understand it, uh, uh, of radio, of entertainment, or even information, um, do you think it might play a role? Because the biggest uh, challenge today, uh, unfortunately, that Ukraine is facing is also this propaganda war mm. that Russia is doing uh, against Ukraine. Um, this information fighting, and so, so giving the like, uh, real news about Ukraine without being overwhelmed by the, the means of Russia today, which is uh, expanding. Uh, do you th so do you think that uh, having a wider range of radio or, or uh, that kind of tool can really help in this uh, propaganda uh, uh, war that Russia is currently? I certainly Ukraine? think so, mm -hmm. because then you, as, as Ukraine, as a country, as a nation, as a people, you're taking control over your, uh, your media, in this case radio. And you're saying, OK, we're offering uh, lots of, of uh, possibilities here. We're, lof we're offering, uh, you know, uh, frequencies, uh, as it is, uh, to more radio stations. And, and of course, as you, as you know, as long as you know these are Ukrainian and they're not, uh, as you're saying, Russia, Russian ones in disguise, uh, you are indeed given, given more pe people more of an offering. And, um, and you, can, you can target many, many more groups much more efficiently. Instead of asking everybody to listen to the one radio station playing only like uh, music from the 50s. And I mean, mm. kids, youngsters, they're yeah. not going to do that. Uh, you can then have news for older people in this radio station. Then you, then you have different kinds of music profiles on, on two or three or four different radio stations. And they're all offering news. Uh, again, the news should also be tailored to, towards its audience. But, but by you know, taking, these, uh, taking control over this yourself, that's exactly what you're doing. You are personalizing radio in, in a way mm. and, and providing a choice, uh, something that people want. You're not forcing one radio station or a few radio station, uh, stations onto to your audiences. And, um, and so that's going to be my, my last question. What do, you, what do you expect from this uh, meeting uh, tomorrow? What do you expect from this um, project in the end? I'm hoping for a good and constructive uh, dialogue uh, and I'm, I'm here 
to uh, give input from from what we've done in Norway. I've also given input on what we're doing in in the rest of the world. Uh, this technology is being used in more than 40, 40 countries. But I also want to hear from from Ukrainian broadcasters, Ukrainian uh, media. Uh, what are your goals? What are your wishes? What are your needs? And to see if there is uh, something that uh, you know that maybe we can uh, contribute with. And I'm, I'm I'm sure there is. And maybe we need to to further develop the platform. Uh, maybe we, we need to do additional services. You know, there's, there's a lot there. But the only way we can accomplish this, in my opinion, is to sit together and, and have a two-way dialogue. I'm not here to, like, to talk uh, for, for two or three hours and, and then not, not get any feedback. So the idea is, a, is the, the exchange. It's the, the exchange, end. exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining us in this interview. It was a pleasure to have you uh, in the studio. Uh, that was uh, Gunnar Gerfors, <coughs> advisor for the Norwegian Broadcasting Corporation. Thank you for watching the program. Stay tuned for the rest. Thank <laughs> you.